Today really is between two speakers. Um, the open baffles are coming along pretty good. Um, I'll give you a quick tour with the handheld with the the iPhone there, but for now, just a quick explanation. So yeah, it looks a little funky right now. I had an issue with one of the planars. Well, actually, I had an issue with two planars tweeters. Um, I fried one by when I had the mini DSP hooked up to it with no protection on the tweeter. I was running some base tests and forgot the tweeter was actually still plugged into the circuit and it went poof and it smoked real good. SCTV, you know, Joe Flaherty and uh, John Candy, you know. So there went 30 bucks. And then for the last week and a half, I guess almost two weeks, I kept thinking, why is that side always sounding dull? And is it my crossover? I, I did find a few little oopsies in the crossover, which I fixed. Well, tonight I just had this brain fart and I said, well, I redid the ferro fluids in these uh, 20 year old, uh, uh, I think these are VIFA tweeters. I believe they're aluminum domes. I, I got the data sheet for it somewhere anyways. So I swapped this guy in for just for kicks and I'm like oh shit so it's not my hearing it's not my preamp it's none of that by the way the bats was never shipped over to uh, Maryland to Victor and company because turns out it was not the preamp definitely not the amp definitely not the DAC it was all setup issues anyways again got got off a topic you know so anyways the planars are getting I just ordered them they're actually, actually, wait a minute, I can probably just, there you go. That's what's going to be the finish. Um, that's going to get replaced. Um, but for now, temporarily, that works. Oops. Oh, that's staying in. Oops. Let's see which one of these guys is plus this guy. Yeah. All right, go back. Yeah, good enough. Okay, I'll fix that in editing. Okay, so, anyways, yeah. So yeah, I fried one tweeter there. Uh, that one there's dull as shit. That one over here is perfect. So for the time being, I'm just going to mount the aluminum domes um, while I wait for the uh, uh, GRS tweeters to come in, probably Thursday or Friday. Um, so yeah, the project is, I'm already into this thing, 500 bucks between stuff that I had, stuff that I bought, stuff that I had done on RMA. Class D amp came back. Um, it's put away on the side for now I'm having some issues with uh, mini DSP so it's just like I said it's a huge list of stuff to rhyme, rhyme off mini DSP I'm always getting low bass on this side no matter what input and outputs I, I select and all this crap try different mini DSP boards having the same problem bypass the mini DSP you know everything's full tilt boogie again but there's no you know crossover so there's another thing I'm thinking about trying is I might be able to get stereo um, 80, uh, stereo subwoofer out of this guy. I'm not sure. i got to look into it. Uh, the other issue, too, with the mini DSP, I'm getting a lot of noise uh, coming out of the circuits. And uh, I've got the power supply separated from the mini DSP board. I'm not using the original boxes. I'm using the old Bose uh, boxes with the copper tape and shit and uh it's the, the noise I, I even try to wall wart and, and the noise is still creeping in so it's starting to piss me off to the point where i might actually look into an analog equalizer but even those things are good ones are hard to find um, i know dbx makes some kick-ass products so i might look into that which i think in the long run is going to be a better deal anyways um, I know Mini DSP makes more expensive units than the little, uh, you know, two by four boards or the, you know, high definition two by four boards. But I just don't want to go down that path right now. Um, but when I did have the bass kicking, oh fuck, I'd never heard bass like this before, man. You know, twenty-two dollar woofers, right? 
I was listening to um, Stravinsky's uh, Right of Right Right of Strings. Sorry, that's the '95 jazz album. Um, right of Springs, and uh, when those timpanis kick in, holy fuck, it's like boom, you know. And you don't. There's no box, and that's the other cool thing is there's no box to fight with. I mean, I've still got to put the shelving in in between the woofers and a nice cover for that. But I mean, right now. You know, it, it sounds pretty damn good. And the center imaging is perfect. You got sound stage, you got back and forth depth, the whole nine yards, you know. Um, yeah, they look like shit right now, but fuck, I can put lipstick on these pigs later on. Um, the main thing is, is getting, I, I actually went to O'Reilly Auto Parts down the road from me here, and I got some Dynamat, and I slapped it on the back, and it, it actually helped tame some of the resonances. I know a lot of people poo-poo using Dynamat and speaker enclosures, but technically these aren't enclosures, you know. So, yeah, you guys have been really, really helpful in your tips and stuff like that. Uh, one gentleman uh, mentioned about screw the analog crossovers, just go, go DSP, and I do agree with him. But to get a totally noiseless, really good, you know, DSP setup ain't cheap. And I'm trying to stay true to this guy by not running its output into another DAC. I mean, I know I was doing it with the Bose 901s, but that was a different scenario, right? And it worked, right? Um, the only thing I want to run any kind of DSP equalization is, is with the bass. Um, Again, I don't know what the hell's going on with the mini DSP. I don't know if any of you guys out there have any mini DSP expertise. I switched between inputs. Uh, right now, I'm running inputs one and two and outputs one and three. And even if I run one and two or three and four, and the board's nothing wrong with it. I've checked it already. I'm always getting low output on one side. I've checked connections. I've checked connectivity. I've checked my menu settings, all of that crap. But I'm always getting low output over there. Um, so anyway, that's the, that's the problems right now. And, you know, again, like you guys said, and Jingle Nuts, you're, you're another great example, man. You know, lo love the posts, love the replies, you know. When these things are done, I, I can just hear the potential in them already, you know. To say I'll never go back to box speakers again is it's yeah it's an understatement but you know there are some box speakers that you know do blow your minds and stuff like that but uh, as I said to you guys in the last video I've been doing DIY since I was in high school you know going to Radio Shack getting a horn tweeter getting a 12 inch woofer uh, blue polycone you know sticking them in a box you know that were basically white van speakers that, that I got from my old man. Um, I blew the shit out of whatever crap was in there, You're, you know. And this thing sounded great. I had no crossover on the woofer and I had whatever electrolytic uh, non-polarized non cap on the on the bi-radial horn tweeter. I don't know if you guys remember that stuff. Um, depends on your age group or who's watching this. Um, those things sounded great. I was in high school, and it sounded way better than the, the white van shit that my old man got me. And then, you know, you, you, after high school, after college, you start making a little more money, and then got the Adcom 345 preamp and the 545 Series 2 uh, amp, um, which just changed my world altogether, you know. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, anybody that pays thousands of dollars for fucking receivers out of their minds, man. Or they got more money to blow than they care, whatever. Um, what else? Again, guys, I never thought sticking a bunch of speakers in a fucking piece of plywood, you know, was going to sound this good, you know. And I, I'm just amazed. Um, what else can I say to you guys? There's going to be another video as things progress, things improve. But I can hear the potential. I can feel the potential in the bass. You know, the, these things are just—they're gonna—they're gonna be mind blowers. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of the crossover, 
and that'll be the end of this video. All right, guys, so those are the crossovers. Uh, the bottom one is a 250 hertz to 2500 hertz uh, bandpass filter, second order Linkwitz Riley. Uh, the top filter, that's a high pass, uh, second order Linkwitz Riley. Uh, the Sonic caps came out of my Bose 901 uh, analog EQ boxes that I modified a few years ago. Um, the Solon uh, stacked caps, that's 56 microfarads in total came from a bunch of projects that I had going back many years ago. I think some of those, I think the, 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 the poly cap with the wires hanging out of it, I think that's about 20 years old. Uh, the little inductor on the left side of the, the bandpass filter there, the one on the bottom, <laughs> that, that's a 7.2 millihenry out of the uh, KEF 1053 crossovers. The two uh, copper foil inductors that you see, um, they are from 1994, so they're 27 years old. Um, I had to do a little bit of patching to them, but it's all good to go. Um, they were from my first uh, serious uh, DIY uh, tower speaker build, fresh out of college when I thought I knew what the hell I was doing. I still think I know what the hell I'm doing, but that's another story. Um, so, Yes, very simple crossovers. Uh, put a 3 dB um, pad on the output of the bandpass filter. Uh, it turns out the 3 dB pad on the bandpass filter worked out a lot better than putting a 3 dB pad on the tweeter, uh, which is what the DSP was leaning me towards, but the reality was, uh, was the opposite. Um, again, lots of cleanup to do, lots of wiring crap to clean up, but at least it's, it's, it's coming together. All right, guys, that's it for the, today's video. Um, again, this is still a work in progress. There's still some more things I got to do. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. And once again, five more subscribers, and I'm up to 500, 500 subscribers in two years. It's good for me. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the support. Bye.